My name is Edward Arias. I am a retired FBI agent. I served with the FBI for about 22 years. Uh, when I retired, I got this job. I am currently the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force Commander for the state of Hawaii. We cover Guam, Saipan, American Samoa, and all the Hawaiian Islands. The Federal Bureau of Investigation is considered the primary law enforcement of the United States. It has the most jurisdiction of any agency in the United States, and it will investigate everything from terrorism, counterintelligence, cyber, uh, which is like hacking. Uh, it'll investigate police departments. It'll even investigate the President of the United States. So the widest range of investigative capabilities. I was an FBI agent for about 22 years. I came in the FBI early in 1996 and ended up retiring uh, at the end of 2017. Unfortunately, in the FBI and in all federal law enforcement agencies, there is a maximum age of 57. So in 2017, I hit uh, 57 years old and I had to retire. Well, you know, I've always, my whole life, been interested in helping people, and I realized that one of the best ways to do that is in law enforcement. I looked at all the different law enforcement agencies and realized that the FBI is the primary law enforcement agency of the United States and probably the best way to make the biggest difference. The other thing was I, I found out that the FBI was desperate for pilots, and I'm a pilot. So I actually came into the FBI because I'm a pilot. And I thought it would be great to have a career where I could not only be in law enforcement, but fly. What did you do before you joined the FBI? So when I graduated from Fordham University, I went into the Marine Corps. My goal was to be a pilot, to be an astronaut. That's what always my, my goal has been. Uh, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I started working uh, as an engineer. I worked on the B-2 bomber. I worked on the U-2 spy plane. I still wanted to be an astronaut, so I moved over and started working on NASA-type projects. I actually got to work at the Goddard Space Flight Center uh, in Maryland and even got, even got to work on a space shuttle mission. What was the most interesting case you've ever worked on? When I was a cyber supervisor here in the Honolulu Division, uh, we had a case where a Russian individual living in Spain was creating these bots, and these are malicious software that runs on your computer and what it was doing was it was stealing money and information from all these computers. He had a network and so we were able to get the Spanish police to arrest him. My agents participated in that and for that we won the top award from the FBI. The, this is awarded by the director of the FBI and it only goes to one squad in the entire FBI out of all the field offices. There are 56 field offices and this one is for the top cyber award for 2013. What was the most famous case you've ever worked on? Well, I was lucky. Graduating from the FBI Academy, I was sent to the New York field office. All the cases were, were big in the New York field office. So in terrorism, when I got to New York, I got to work on TWA 800. That was the plane going to France that blew up. I got to work the African bombing, which was the in Kenya Tanzania, Terrorists tried to blow up the embassies there. And of course, the biggest case was 9-11. I was in New York, 9-11. Saw the second plane go into the building. Uh, we worked that case for months, and I was honored to be part of that investigation. When you see movies like Judas and the Black Messiah, how do you reconcile with the past and current reputation of the FBI? There's no doubt that the FBI in the past violated people's rights. I mean, that's one of the one of the major problems with the FBI in the past, there was a church commission that happened in Congress in 1984 and they acknowledged that investigating Martin Luther King and Malcolm X was illegal. They didn't have a reason to do that. So they came out with what's called the Attorney General Guidelines. And as a supervisor, I made sure that my agents were following the Attorney General Guidelines. You just can't open up an investigation on someone that you don't like. You have to follow the law. If you had to advise your younger self, would you still join the FBI? I would. It's been a really good career. I got to do things that I wouldn't have done ordinarily. Got to investigate really interesting cases. I got to travel the world. I got to fly as a professional pilot. 
I still fly with the FBI. I'm currently a what's called a task force officer, which is I'm a state officer, but I swore in to the FBI so I get federal authority, and they still let me fly, which is great. My name is Veronica Duzon, and I'm a Maryland attorney for the last 20 years, and I'm married to a former FBI agent. What was it like to be married to an FBI agent? Well, it's like any other profession. But I must admit, it was a tight-knit community, and I enjoyed socializing with the other family members and wives. Can you tell me about three events that stood out to you that remind you that you're married to an FBI agent? Well, of course. The first one was when he graduated from the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. The family and friends, we were given a tour of the beautiful campus, and all I kept thinking about was the movie Silence of the Lambs, when uh, Jodie Foster also graduated from the FBI Academy. Well, the second one was much more serious because it involved 9-11. My husband worked in New York City and we still lived in Maryland. We just moved into a brand new home with my two-month-old son. The morning of 9-11, my husband called me and said, turn on CNN. When we turned on CNN, that's when we found out a plane just struck one of the Twin Towers in New York. And, and unfortunately, it happened to be the North Tower where my sister worked. So for the next six hours, we were in panic mode trying to figure out and locate my sister. My husband was able to contact me and try to keep me calm during that time, but it, I wasn't calm until I finally heard from my sister, and that's when she told me she was in the building up until 10 minutes right before it collapsed. So luckily, she got home with no problem. My husband afterwards worked at the 9-11 investigation. The final event was when he received the Director's Award back in 2013. It was an honor to be there with other family members and friends, and I couldn't have been more proud and happy for him. Can you tell me anything about your life with you have not already mentioned? I had the uh, opportunity to become an instructor at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. So that's where when you get hired, that's where you go to train to become an FBI agent. It, 16 weeks was the length of the academy at the time. I think it's up to 21 weeks now. And they teach you everything. They teach you defensive tactics. They teach you how to shoot. They teach you the law, uh, how to do arrest, that kind of thing. And I was honored to be able to teach there. I also had the opportunity to teach not only within the United States, but internationally. So I would go to Thailand four or five times a year to teach at an academy called International Law Enforcement Academy, ILEA. I've been to Hong Kong, uh, Philippines, uh, Australia. I've been almost all over the world, Spain. So it was great. I love teaching and it was good to have that opportunity.